winter cake. Where can it be, thought Thomas. Maybe I left it outside. He looked in the tall grasses. He walked around the house. What are you looking for, Thomas? Asked Lucy. Have you lost something? Yes, said Thomas. Yes, I have. Just this morning, I fetched my fruits from my special fruit drying spot. Such a beautiful basket of dried up fruits, apples, berries, and plums, apricots, grapes, and cherries, and now I can't find it. I must have set it down somewhere, but I've looked everywhere, twice. He looked around as if the basket of fruits might suddenly appear, but it didn't. Lucy looked around too. How mysterious, she said. I won't be able to make the winter cake, said Thomas. A winter's eve without winter cake? I ask you, what kind of holiday is that? The holiday isn't only about winter cake, said Lucy. I am bereft, said Thomas, forlorn. An icy blast lifted Lucy briefly from the ground. I'd better get going, Thomas, she said. It's starting to bluster, but don't be sad. We'll have a wonderful holiday. We always do. I don't see how, Thomas called out as she flew away. I honestly don't, he said to himself. Perhaps I should have invited her inside, he added, as the winds grew stronger and snowier. Fly safely, he said softly. He knew she could no longer hear him, but he hoped it would help. Worried, he stepped into his tree and shut the door. I hope you find your fruits. The gentle snowfall had thickened into a storm. Lucy flew into snowflakes the size of her face, and there were so many of them. She struggled to stay upright as frigid gusts tossed her this way and that. What did it matter that she could barely keep her eyes open? All she could see was white. Was she even moving forward? She flapped her wings harder, and then, thwoop, she fell to the ground. Lucy lay there, stunned. For a moment, she could not move. Heavy flakes of wet snow piled up on her. She knew it would not be long before they covered her up completely. With a mighty effort, she struggled to her feet and leaned into the fierce winds. Amid the pelting snow, there was fragrant whiffs of something else. Something friendly. Tea, she said aloud. Cocoa and pastries. She listened and heard the faint, muffled buzz of cheery voices. Follow the fragrant whiffs and the faint murmurs she hopped through the blizzard to an opening between snow-laden boughs of an evergreen. She found herself at the door of a tea room. I'll just stop in, she said to herself, and wait for the storm to pass. Inside the tea room, everyone was talking about the weather. Snowy weather puts me in the mood for a holiday. It is holiday weather, that's for sure. This weather is nuts, right? Ha, 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 I've never seen so much weathery. Well, almost everyone, Lucy's ears perked up. Found me a nice basket of dried up fruits this morning, perfect for weather cake. Lucy turned and saw a tall, sleek animal with small, round ears speaking to the server as he paid his bill. He held a basket filled with beautiful dried up fruits, apples, berries, and plums, apricots, 
grapes and cherries. She couldn't hear all of what he said. It was so noisy, but she heard enough. Hastily, she paid for her tea and biscuit and hurried after the vile beast. Outside, the storm had ended as quickly as it began. There it is. Thomas has dried up fruit. I feel as if someone is following me. I don't know what I'll do, but I must do something. I must be imagining it. Already the winter sun was turning the top of the snow crisp and sparkly. But wait, what was this? The good-for-nothing fruit thief was knocking on a door. Thomas's door. The door opened and Thomas stood in the doorway. I think this may be yours, said the scoundrel. I found it in the meadow. Someone at the tea room told me where to find you. Oh, my, said Thomas. Thank you, thank you so much. My pleasure, said the stranger. A holiday without winter cake is a poor one indeed. Good afternoon, then. So many cardinals about today. The stranger turned and walked away, whistling a cheery tune. As he passed the bush where Lucy sat, he glanced up absent-mindedly and said, Lovely day. What? Lucy managed to close her beak. Then she opened it and said, Yes, yes, isn't it? Lucy fluttered down and pecked at Thomas's door. So many visitors, he said, and he, when he opened it, what a spectacular day this is. I am jubilant, extra happy. Lucy hopped inside. She told him her tale. I feel so foolish, she said. I jumped to conclusions. Everyone makes mistakes, said Thomas. I feel foolish, too. I remember now that I set my basket down to catch snowflakes on my tongue. The first flakes of the season are the most scrumptious. I guess I forgot to pick it back up. Thomas smiled. How kind of him, though, he said. What a noble chap. Yes, said Lucy. Let's make him a winter cake, said Thomas. Yes, said Lucy. Let's. So they chopped. They sifted. They measured. They poured and they stirred. They almost forgot the walnuts. More chopping, more stirring. They popped the pan into the oven and set the timer. While the cake baked, they sang songs and gossiped. The winter cake, when it came out, was a beauty, golden brown with bits of color like jewels. It smelled divine. Thomas drizzled white icing over it, like snow on a lumpy hillside. He lifted it onto a pretty plate and tied a ribbon around it. I've thought of something, said Lucy. What? said Thomas. We don't know where this guy lives, said Lucy. We don't even know his name. Hmm, said Thomas. That's true. The two friends looked at one another. They looked at the winter cake on its plate with its ribbons. They looked down at the shadows, blue shapes on the snow. A, tail, a trail of crispy footprints led from where they stood, away from the forest. That's it, cried Lucy. We can follow his footprints. Yes, said Thomas. Off we go. And off they went. At first it was easy. But soon there were obstacles and difficulties. I am stout but nimble. I hope. There were icy streams and tangled thickets. Daylight dwindled. How are you doing? You're almost to the shore. I am buoyant, but only for a while. Our friend must be an agile fellow. He is certainly slender. In the murky twilight, Thomas and Lucy did not see the precipice. The pretty plate was broken, but the winter cake wasn't. It's a sturdy winter cake, a resilient winter cake. It must have bounced on a pointy rock. Still, it was cold and dark. 
and they were far from home. Lost, perhaps. Maybe it was a mistake to travel so far. It's a bit farther than I thought it would be.